everyone in this video we will be seeing about catalase and peroxidase these are all some of the enzymes that is present in our body that is responsible to convert harmful hydrogen peroxide into various unharmful forms then this can also oxidize certain substrates by using this hydrogen peroxide as an oxidizing agent so let's go into it so initially we will be seeing about catalase so catalase is having Fe as a metal where this Fe is in its plus 3 oxidation state and it is surrounded by this porphyrin part. So if uh, in a metal of porphyrin, iron is the metal and if it is surrounded by the porphyrin then we can call it as a heme group. So it is containing a heme group and then this entire porphyrin is surrounded by the protein part. So here we can see something that is below this plane that is below this porphyrin part is called the proximal site and if anything is present above this porphyrin part is uh, it is present in the distal site so here we can see in catalase tyrosine is present in the proximal site so here this is the structure of the tyrosine and as you can see it is having a phenolic OH group and this oxygen here is bound to with the ion in the case of our enzyme so this is attached in the proximal site so this is a multi subunit enzyme and their optimum ph is 7 in for human for human it is 7 and what is its reaction means it will catalyze that is speed up the reaction what is the process of catalyzation means uh, it is lowering the activation energy of certain process to produce the products the activation energy is lowered okay so this enzyme will catalyze the disproportionation of hydrogen peroxide and other organic peroxides so what is disproportionation means uh, consider a compound is also reduced and it is also oxidized during the process of formation of products. In this case hydrogen peroxide is also reduced and it is also oxidized during the process of formation of oxygen and water. So why do we need to disproportionate this hydrogen peroxide means this is very harmful for our tissues and cells it can damage it so we have to convert this into a form which is not harmful for our body that's why it is converted into oxygen and water molecule here we can see that during this process two moles of that is two molecules of hydrogen peroxide is needed and one molecule of oxygen is needed and two molecule of water is needed and then this can also catalyze various oxidation of substrate where here this hydrogen peroxide we all know that it is a very good oxidizing agent so this uh, hydrogen peroxide will act as an oxidizing agent and it can oxidize any substrate and this enzyme will uh, catalyze this process so here they have mentioned that in books it can this catalase can convert millions of hydrogen peroxide each second so how many processes are going on in our body various processes are going on in every second so this catalase is having two forms initially uh, it is in the fe3 plus that is in the uh, reduced form it will lose uh, this electron and it will convert into Fe4 plus state which is the oxidized form. In both the form it is colored. Why is it colored mean? It is uh, due to the pi to pi star transition that is uh, involving the porphyrin ring. We know that the porphyrin ring is conjugated around the boundary and it is containing the double bond in it. So here this double bond will be responsible for the pi 2 pi star transition and hence this catalase is colored in both the form. Coming to peroxidase, there is everything is having similar structure only the axial ligands that is the ligands present in the proximal site is varying. As you can see they are having similar structures but the axial ligands are varying. Here you can see that 
Similarly, Fe is present and it is in the 3 plus oxidation state and it is surrounded by the porphyrin part. Hence, we can call it as a heme group and so it is a heme protein. And in the axial site, here we can see histidine is present. So, there are, uh, I have mentioned two peroxidase here, horseradish peroxidase and chloroperoxidase. There is also some other peroxidase like cytochrome C peroxidase. Uh, I haven't mentioned it. But here, this is the structure of horseradish peroxidase and this is for chloroperoxidase. So, in, what is the difference here is, in the case of horseradish peroxidase, the axial ligand in the proximal site is histidine. So, this is the structure of histidine and this is the imidazole part that is present in the histidine where this is the nitrogen in the imidazole part. This nitrogen is attached to our Fe, Fe which is in the 3 plus state. And in the case of chloroperoxidase, so it is uh, the axial ligand is cysteine. So this is the structure of cysteine. It is containing a thio group as you can see here. This thio group F is uh, bound to the Fe which is in the 3 plus state. So what is their function? They can catalyze the oxidation of substrates like ascorbate, ferrocyanate, cytochrome C and this is done by using hydrogen peroxide. So here hydrogen peroxide is acting as the oxidizing agent and hence this uh, enzyme will be catalyzing the process. Le now we will be seeing the mechanism for both the enzymes that are peroxidized and catalyzed. The mechanism is similar like it is only two steps. They both follow the same mechanism. We will be seeing it. So initially Fe is present in its plus 3 oxidation state and it is surrounded by the porphyrin. That's why it is represented as P and this entire thing is called the heme part of the enzyme. Okay. Later on this is reacting with our hydrogen peroxide. How it can react? As you can see in everything there is vacant the uh, position above that is the distal site is vacant something can bind there uh, to make it octahedral so in this case a hydrogen peroxide will go and uh, bind in that sixth site okay so that uh, this uh, hydrogen peroxide is the substrate and then finally it is forming Fe4 Oxo group is present and P plus. So what is this? We will see. So here in the first step, note it very clearly. H2O2 is the oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent means it will oxidize others and itself it will get reduced. Reduction means we can say either gain of hydrogen or loss of oxygen. In this case, our hydrogen peroxide is losing one of its oxygen to our enzyme. That's why this Fe is now having one oxygen attached to it. Later on, this is an oxidizing agent. So, it has to oxidize our enzyme. So, our enzyme has to now get oxidized. Oxidized means loss of electron. So, both of them will get oxidized. First, Fe can oxidize uh, by losing one electron uh, and it can form Fe4 plus and later on it can uh, lose another one electron and convert into Fe5. But what happens is this porphyrin ring will have the pyrrole part, right? In the pyrrole, the outer boundary is fully conjugated by double bond. One of the pyrrole double bond will donate one of its electrons. So, this electron is lost to the Fe and later on this electron is remaining as it is. So, this is called radical cation. So, this is the radical and this is the cation. So, what happens is this electron is donated to our Fe. So, now Fe which is in the plus 5 oxidation state gains one electron and it will be converted into Fe4. I hope it is clear. So, that's why Fe is in the plus 4 oxidation state and P is denoted as plus because P plus denotes this radical cation that is formed in the porphyrin part and this oxo group comes from hydrogen peroxide. 
later on there is a release of water molecule because h2o will be remaining so this is the first step and this thing formed is uh, represented as compound 1 later on i'll just tell compound 1 so this is called compound 1 so this is a first step product so what happens is this compound 1 will again mostly react with uh, hydrogen peroxide in the case of uh, peroxidase and catalase enzyme it can also react with some other substrate to form uh, some other products but while it is reacting with hydrogen peroxide what happens is now our compound 1 will act as the oxidizing agent earlier hydrogen peroxide was acting as an oxidizing agent now our compound 1 that is this group is going to act as an oxidizing agent so it will get reduced and this is going to get oxidized uh, i hope you know that if it is a uh, uh, oxidizing means what happens is it is going to either gain oxygen or it is going to lose away the hydrogen so in this case this hydrogen per peroxide is losing away its hydrogen and so this is now losing h2 and then uh, we know this is going to get uh, reduced reduction means gain of hydrogen or loss of oxygen so this oxygen is now lost away so this h2 and uh, oxygen from here will make up a h2o bond and it is released as water molecule and here this oxygen is present remaining that will be also released later on what happens this fe is gaining electron because it, this uh, entire group is getting reduced right since it is an oxidizing agent it is going to reduce so reducing so it is gaining one electron and it is forming three plus states and this porphyrin also gaining that electron and it is uh, uh, converting from the radical cation form into the normal form so this is the entire process so here also one water molecule is released totally two water molecules are released and one oxygen is released and two hydrogen peroxide are involved in the process so so why is it called disproportionation now you may know because initially hydrogen peroxide was acting as an oxidizing agent and it was getting reduced but later on it was uh, getting oxidized so it is uh, doing it is also oxidized it is also reduced during a process that's why it is called the disproportionation of hydrogen peroxide hope you are clear with the entire mechanism coming on to deep explanation for catalase you think that is found from bovine liver so bovine means we represent cattle uh, animals like uh, buffaloes ox cow etc so this is the uh, porphyrin part and this is surrounded by the protein so if we zoom in the porphyrin it will look like this here this is the fp which is in the plus 3 oxidation state and this is the porphyrin part it is containing various substituents that's why it is called porphyrin and in the proximal position we have already seen catalase will have tyrosine in their proximal position that's represented here tyrosine 357 and uh, phenolic oxygen group that is present in the tyrosine it, uh, it is attached to the Fe so what happens is this tyrosine will increase the reactivity of Fe that is Fe3 is converted easily into Fe4 plus state when this tyrosine is present so this is the reaction that is undergone so here E represents the enzyme so the same reaction so initially Fe3 is reacting with the uh, 3 plus state is reacting with hydrogen peroxide and compound 1 is formed. We know what is compound 1. PFE4 double bond O. PFE4 double bond O. And we can call it as an oxenoid species. And later on this compound 1. So this compound 1 it can oxidize, formate, nitrate, ethanol and also hydrogen peroxide it can oxidize anything so this compound one is an oxidizing agent which can oxidize anything so coming to chloroperoxidase 
so under peroxidase we'll be seeing chloroperoxidase and horstradish peroxidase so this is the structure of chloroperoxidase fa is in the plus 3 state and the spin state is low spin it is in the low spin peric center so it has low spin peric center um this axial ligand here is cysteine so this is the structure of cysteine which is having a thio group and this thio group is attached to our fp so here also similar mechanism is happening in the first step our enzyme is reacting with hydrogen peroxide and it is forming compound 1 and this compound 1 can react with chlorine so since it is why is it named chloroperoxidase means because this can add that it can transfer chlorine to the organic substrate so any organic substrate it can bind the chlorate with the help of this chloroperoxidase so this is the overall mechanism representing this chloroperoxidase reaction so i hope you understand this and then how stradish peroxidase similarly fe is in the plus 3 oxidation state and this is the protein part and the axial ligand in this case is cysteine uh the imidazole nitrogen is attached to the fe part and then we can see that the here also similarly compound 1 is formed later on this compound 1 can react with alkyl amines or sulfides and then it can go on like further reactions hence can happen entirely the hydrogen peroxide is uh, converted into an unharmful form and it can also oxidize various other substrates so this is the general format of the reaction undergone by this horstradish peroxidase so this is like a note if you are not understanding my words like uh, if you don't know what is oxidation oxidation reduction or oxidizing agent or reducing agent you may not uh, have understood it clearly so oxidation is nothing but gain of oxygen so you can keep in mind like o so gain of oxygen and its the opposite is loss of hydrogen and oxidation means consists l e o so loss of electron loss of electron means oxidation so reduction means it is uh, like gain of hydrogen if you remember that everything is easy that is then loss of oxygen and then gain of electron so g e r gain of electron reduction an oxidizing agent means from the term you can understand it is oxidizing something so it is oxidizing others but itself it will get reduced and in the case of reducing agent it will reduce some other substrate but itself it will get oxidized so i hope you are clear with the common basic thing so that you can understand it very clearly uh my references or uh, bioorganic chemistry by lippert berg and organometallic and bioorganic chemistry by ajay kumar so thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed this entire video so this is chemistry of our life in our daily body function these are all happening like in every second everything many reactions are happening so do support me thank you thank you for watching if there is any queries or uh, any doubts you can mention in comments uh, once again thank you